Good blessed Wednesday morning, August the 14th, 2024. It's about 6.08 uh, a.m. I greet all human beings all around the world. All around the world. All around the world. All around the world. All around the world, all around the world with a universal greetings of peace and the blessings of God be with you. It doesn't matter what your political, philosophical, personal, nor your religious beliefs may be. It doesn't matter whether you're the richest to the poorest person on the face of this earth. It doesn't matter whether you're the proclaimed toughest to the proclaimed weakest person on the face of this earth. It doesn't matter if you're my family, friends, nor my proclaimed enemies. It doesn't matter whether you like me or anything that I say or do. That's your prerogative. You have a First Amendment to the United States Constitution. Freedom to protest, freedom of speech, uh, freedom to uh, associate, uh, 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 freedom to gather. Uh, and if I didn't say it, a freedom to uh, protest. Uh, if you are a felon or a person on probation or parole, you might want to check with your probation or your parole officer or your local law enforcement uh, agencies to see if it's legal for you to associate if you are felon or if you're on probation or parole. Now, in some places like Charles, Missouri, Mississippi County, they make exceptions. Uh, you can have a traffic ticket and can't associate with certain people, but you can have a rape or uh, a voter fraud and you can be on committees here in the city. But let me leave that alone. What I want to talk about today, I want y'all to pay close attention. It's, it's just about five minutes of this sister. I call her a good sister. I call her a God-fearing sister. Uh, she might have been the first black uh, city council member here in Charleston, Missouri, Mississippi County. You rarely have blacks, period. Uh, on the police department, you probably got one. A sergeant been on it about 30 years. Been a sergeant for almost about 30 years. Uh, no black served deputies here in Charleston, Missouri, uh, Mississippi County. Uh, I don't even think you the only blacks that you have work in uh, Charleston, Missouri, Mississippi County City Hall uh, is probably public workers. But anyway, what I want y'all to do is pay close attention. This lady was just elected not too long ago, but she resigned as of July of last year, I think. I mean, July of this year, uh, the the 16th, I believe, of July of 2024, but she came to uh, yesterday, Tuesday, uh, August the 13th, 2024, uh, to hand over her resignation. But I want y'all to pay close attention to her story. It's a story that me and other people been echoing for years, but they've been going on deaf ears. But she became a victim. It'll show you what the Charles, Missouri Housing Authority and what the Charles, Missouri Police Department ran by Robert Hearns, a known Nazi Ku Klux Klan, and his city attorney, Tabitha, I don't know if her name, Thurman, Brown, or Graham. She got about three, four different names, meaning that she must have been married two or three different times. She remind me of Margie Taylor Green. You see what I'm saying? A racist. Uh, but anyway, I want you to pay close attention to her story. And then I'm going to come back. Now, it's, it's sad when you a city council member and you living in the Charles, Missouri Housing Authority uh, 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 projects or, or, or properties and you can't be guarded. Where's all that money going uh, at the Charles, Missouri Police Department here that you can't get cameras that work? Where's all the money going uh, for, for the uh, Charles, Missouri Housing Authority? Hey, hey, what's going on? Doing all right? You know I'm trying to set them out. All right. Uh, but I want, I want you to uh, ask, where's the money going from the Charles, Missouri Housing Authority? Let me tell you some of it. Paul Page, a white man that don't even live here in Charleston, Missouri. I think he live in East Prairie, Missouri. 
He was governing these Charles, Missouri Highland Authority projects and properties for 32 years. The NAACP here, also known as the uh, extended branch of the sister branch of the Ku Klux Klan, some of these Masons, the same thing. Some of these individuals in these sororities, the same thing. If the shoe fit wear, because some of you blacks is in them sororities and you lay here and see what your brother or sister be doing to the black community and don't care. You see what I'm saying? Some of you Masons that see what some of your uh, uh, Mason brothers are, uh, is, is doing to the black community and don't care. Y'all ain't no different than the enemy. And I don't give a damn if you don't like it or not. You see what I'm saying? Y'all make me sick to my stomach. Y'all worse than these racist white people. And if you shoot fit wet, if you ain't racist, don't let it bother you. But, but the white supremacists run Charles, Missouri. Negroes don't run nothing down here but they mouth. All they do is run out the money. But I want y'all to listen to this lady's story and tell me why the cameras wasn't working. Then I looked at her police report written by the same individual or rejected. Uh, Chief of Police from East Prairie, uh, Mark Higgins. And he say the same thing to her that he said to me. What it should be, but then when he get with them Ku Klux Klans like Robert Hearn, it's the same thing. With, with Tabitha Thurman, Brown, Graham, whatever she is, <laughs> husband behind some of these uh, drug addicts and felons to do their slave work. But on that report, where it got case status, now she said this happened a few weeks ago, uh, uh, two, three weeks ago, on the case status, it don't have nothing. Y'all seen on mine case status open one day and then close the next. But y'all take a look at it and then I'm going to get back with you. It's sad. The lady echoing what I've been echoing. Children's people been getting murdered in these projects. Now you have a few police that do their job, but some of them all they do is come on. They some lazy ass police, lazy ass sheriff deputies. If the shoe fit wet, you see what I'm saying. When you let your chief of police and you let your uh, sheriff dictate to y'all to not enforce the law, y'all ain't no different than the criminals. But I want y'all to check that out, and then I'm going to get back with you. thought about it is that someone may have been watching me or knew that I was moving. And the only peculiar thing about this situation is my house was not broken into. Someone had access to my home and my belongings. And a key was used to get into my house. I made that aware to Officer Higgins, and we came to the conclusion that Someone either at the Housing Authority Board or someone, you know, the maintenance man or whatever, someone had to have had access to my house in order to get in there. My front door was locked. My back door was locked Saturday night, as the um, report stated, and I don't ever leave my doors unlocked. I always lock my door. He wanted to come in to get whatever they wanted. And... It's not necessarily about the things. It's not necessarily about the things, but the fact that my privacy was invaded, my children's thing were take things were taken, and I feel like there's nothing being done about it. So I, the housing authority, I haven't had the chance to address the actual board of housing authority because today at the um, during the meeting I was at work. I didn't get off in time to go to the actual board meeting, so I just decided to come here first. But it's just not, it's not fair. It's not fair and it's not just. And like I said, I have a lot of family members in Charleston. This is my home. And I just don't feel, I don't feel like things were taken serious. Amen. I really don't. And for that to escalate the way that it did and get to the point to where people were seeing people coming in and out of my house. And every time I called to ask about an update or anything, it was overlooked. It was overlooked, and the question was asked to me, well, have you heard anything? I'm not a police officer. 
I shouldn't be out here investigating my own situation. You know, the most I can do is ask my neighbors, you know, have y'all seen anything or anything that way, but I'm just, I don't want this to happen to somebody else. I'm not sure what could be done about my situation because it's been literally like three weeks since this happened, like two or three weeks. So I'm not, you know, looking for sympathy. I'm not looking for any type of commotion, any trouble, but something needs to be done about the security in this community. The officers, they, they need more, um, I don't know the word I'm trying to use, reinforcement. These cameras, we have a million cameras and most of them don't work. There's no reason why the footage connected to the police station and the housing authority should have been out for an entire year. A that is year. A priority. We have had children murder in our community since then. A year. A year. We have had break ins, we've had fights, we've had this and that, mm -hmm. and yeah. that one little thing could solve a lot of those problems. Amen. Just getting the cameras connected. You know, because Officer Higgins informed me that, you know, well, that, that camera right there, the camera at my back door, it pans. And when it pans to a certain extent, it stops. So he said, if we had the footage, we would have been able to see who was coming out of your back door. But like I said, conveniently, the footage stopped rolling all of July until the day after my incident. So I'm just asking as a city council, as a former city council board member, that you all definitely look into the security of this community because it's a problem. True. Burglaries are equivalent to being raped. Mm -hmm. So I, I understand what you're saying. You you feel like you've been violated, and it's just a, a really a bad situation. And I, I, I get that the inside, but well, do I have a motion to adjourn the regular session? I make a motion to adjourn the regular session go to a closed session. Okay. Motion made by Councilman Whiteside. Now these is just some of your projects on my side of town. My house with them bushes that it separates the projects. Now these is just some of the projects here on this side of town. But you got a you got a, you got a lot of them. And a lot of crime that happens right here, my security cameras have to get them. That's why I put ones on, the, on some on the roof. You see what I'm saying? For the protection of my house. So when somebody come to do something to my house or get inside of my house, they won't come out alive. I'm letting y'all know, those that y'all, that Robert Hearns and uh, the chief of police here in Charles, Missouri, Mississippi County, in uh, Brenton Farrell, the sheriff here, Charles, Missouri, Mississippi County, uh, allow y'all to come over here and try to terrorize my house. When you terrorize it this time, I ain't dialing 911. I'm gonna be 911. And at the end, you're gonna see what you're going in. But ain't no need to the Amalans having no siren on because you're gonna be a parent DOA. Not just a regular DOA, a parent. It's gonna be apparently that you dead. You see what I'm saying? That's the only way to deal with your enemies here in Charles, Missouri, Mississippi County. You see what I'm saying? That's the only way to deal with them when you certain people. See, one thing about it, I looked at that city council meeting uh, yesterday on, on Tuesday, uh, August the 13th. Now, they give you three minutes to talk. And it was a man up there that Rodney Jones uh, Y'all know Rodney Jones is a black individual. Don't give a damn about the black community. Him or Lester, Rodney Jones, or his preach a pastor. Now, you'll see when the camera's going by me in my black T-shirt, which was with my black history T-shirt, and you'll see somebody with a white uh, a T-shirt on on the side of me, Rodney Jones. 
You know, when he dressed up around them uh, white folks in them meetings, he have on his, his, his suits. But when he come to this, he know ain't nothing going to be happening or spoken about on the black community. Now, the man that uh, uh, represented the, the people that's talking about the, uh, declaring these historical buildings, he mentioned a lot of them. He even mentioned this movie house downtown, Charleston, Missouri, Mississippi County, that I've been down here 28, going on 28, 29 years, and it ain't even never been open. Look like if the wind blow it'll fall down. They got to mention in all these papers. Then he he told about Robert Hearns. Oh yeah, we got to remember the one uh, concerning Betty Hearns. Betty Hearns is Robert Hearns' auntie that was a one-time elected uh, Missouri State Representative. Uh, Betty Hearns' husband was Robert Hearns. They named a school after him. They got his head up there at the courthouse. Got a bench with his thing on the courthouse, you know, and he told Robert Hearns, he said, yeah, that's right, you the heritor. He, he heritor everything because Robert Hearns, like I told him, your family dying off. You see what I'm saying? Your family dying off. You can inherit all you want, but you can't take none of that shit to the grave with your ex Darren Kane, y'all formal uh, prosecuting attorney. But anyway, this man, they talking about all these historical buildings. And then he asked if they have any questions. Now, we citizens at this meeting. Now, the city council asking all type of questions. And then I, after it seemed like they was done, I rose, raised my hand. Can I ask you a question? The first thing, Bobby Hearns, you know, in so many words, Raymond, shut up. In so many words, that's what he said. That Robert Hearns is the chief of police. Y'all done seen him put me out of city council meetings because I speak the truth. I ain't like some of them Negroes, them, them uh, NAACP members. They was, they was packed in there. When they, you see that camera, they packed in there. Ain't now one of them said a damn word. Listening to that black city council lady story, they ain't said a damn word. I couldn't say nothing else because I would have been put out, probably shot and killed. But let me show you this here. Now, they was talking about all these buildings that they want to declare uh, 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 historical buildings they ain't named none of these black buildings so after this man sat down and then people got talking in I, I asked again can I ask this man some questions and I asked this man I said since you talking about historical buildings I said what about the CF Bowen Center formerly known as the Lincoln School where blacks was confined to when the Charleston Consolidated School number seven didn't want blacks going there. So they was confined to the Lincoln School, which is the CF Bowen Center now. That's what a what a black sellout headquarters is at, 700 uh, Side Williams Avenue or 700 Elm Street. The housing authority connected to it. I said, what about the Helen Kern Center? Miss Helen Kern was a black civil rights leader, NAACP member. And all them damn NAACP members from the president on down was in there. And they now one of them said a damn word. I'm an NAACP member, but independent from all these NAACP uh, uh, chapters because they ain't doing a damn thing for the black people, but getting money. That's all they doing is getting money. But I want y'all to pay close attention. I want y'all to pay close attention to what this lady was saying and then listen to the mayor, Rick Toon. He said, I'm sorry to hear what, what happened to you. Uh, a burglarizing in somebody's home is just like rape, violated. Now, Robert Hearns, the chief of police, when I talk about them not arresting uh, and charging a white man that threatened me, uh, they, they, they got an excuse for it. They, they said, well, that ain't, this ain't where you bring that up at. He didn't want to dare tell this city council member. This city council member was the best thing that happened to Charleston, Missouri City Council uh, since I've been down here because she speak up for all things, not just some. She was the only city council member uh, that spoke up about what happened to me with these dogs and this white individual that the city attorney, the city manager, the chief of police and all them other Ku Klux Klans. The only one that I don't see a Klan on that, on that thing is the lady that keeps, keeps the books, the clerk. 
She just came back from having a baby. Good person. David Harris, I ain't got nothing against you, the public work man. You and your work is disrespectful to me. I ain't got nothing against your pastor. I believe his name David Lucas, that they gave an award for, for doing whatever he do here in Charles, Missouri, Mississippi County. But I like what he said. He said this is a collective thing. But one thing that Charles, Missouri, Mississippi County ain't going to do, they not going to honor no civil rights leaders. And they praying that Donald Trump get elected. All them jokers, they, they support Donald Trump, a man that's convicted of 34 felony crimes. Women's, uh, women's accused him of tapping him on the butt. He got pictures with Jeffrey Epstein. But these are the type of people they want, like Rodney Jones, Lester Gillespie, the NAACP. But I'm going to leave y'all here. The, this lady, was her, her place was, was burglarized, and, 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 and uh, the only thing saving the, the person that did it, she said that they couldn't have broke in. They had to have a key. So that means somebody from the housing authority had to have access to her house. But do you think the city of Charleston, Missouri give a damn? Do you think the NAACP give a damn? No, they don't. Peace be still. I want y'all to take a look and see what the, the police incident or offense uh, reports look like here in Charleston, Missouri. You see what this was. This was a threat. A white man threatened me, said he had a contract out on my head. This is, let's see who it is. That's Mark, that's Officer Mark Higgins. You see, for a minute it was open. On the day that I complained about it, the day it happened on, uh, on uh, May the 17th, 2024. Then look at here. On June the 16th, 2024, same thing. They done broke it down from threat to harassment. You see what the status say? Close. Status say uh, open here. This is the prosecuting attorney. When the city manager told me to, to fill out a report, and I did, this is what the city manager did. Case status, close. And she didn't say why. She just put Miss Graham. I don't know what her name is. I call her Margie Taylor Green. Y'all know who Margie Taylor Green is. Uh, uh, Ms. Graham has refused prosecution of this case. You should have seen the way Ms. Graham, uh, uh, Bobby Hearns, and uh, Rick Toon talked to me when I just wanted to ask the man who was talking about preserving historical buildings, uh, especially something that Robert Hearns, Auntie Betty Hearns has connection to who he said Robert Hearns is the heritor now. When I got up to speak, uh, all three of these individuals, the city attorney, uh, Tabitha Brown, Graham, whatever her name is, Robert Hearns, the chief of police, and the mayor, Rick Toon, first thing they uh, got to saying, uh, well, you got to you gotta come up here. Uh, uh, you, you, you know how many minutes you got. I know I got three minutes. I don't even need three minutes. And I said, I said why is it every time that y'all, I get ready to speak, Y'all either putting me out or trying to attack me. Is it my spirit? Disturb y'all evil spirits? And then Rick Toon, the mayor, the racist ass mayor. Uh, he had the audacity to say, well, we don't need no 30 minutes. I didn't say I needed 30 minutes. You see what I'm saying? Y'all ask these people questions that's beneficial to the white people in the white side of town. All them Negroes sitting up front. On the same side that man was sitting on and some on the side I was sitting on, that's NAACP members, they don't give a damn, but I do give a damn. I ain't from Charleston, but my daddy was here in this racist-ass town. It was racist when, when he got drafted in the military in the 1940s, and it's still racist now. They talking about uh, reserve, preserving uh, all these so-called historical buildings. All I was asking about is the Lincoln School, where black folks was confined to only place they can go to school. Because the white people back then didn't want them to go to school. 
in the Charleston Consolidated School Number Seven. Look it up. Davis versus uh, uh, Charles, Missouri, uh, Mississippi County Board of Education. Now, when this man got to talk, when he was responding to me after all the attacks from the mayor, the city attorney, and the chief of police, the man responded to me. I mean, he was nice. He said, Raymond, I'd be willing to talk to you, but what is it to talk about? Y'all done did your survey, Rodney Jones. You introducing the people on your staff, Rodney Jones. We know Negroes like Rodney Jones and Alessia Gillespie going to be on all these things because they don't give a damn what's going on in the black community. All they're worried about is giving the black community Walla Millens and Pumpkins. But this man, he looked at the only black that's on the police department, Sergeant Percy, that was at the uh, city council meeting. He said, well, I used to do, I, I used to uh, play hoops, uh, didn't I, uh, uh, Percy, at the, at the Lincoln School. I don't care what you played at the Lincoln School with hoops with Percy or nobody else, but I bet you wasn't around in the 1940s when my daddy and them was going there playing no hoops because you probably were playing hoops. At the Charleston Consolidated School number seven. You see what I'm saying? I wasn't talking about no hoops. You ain't talked about no damn hoops. That's what you think of the Lincoln School. That's what Les Gillespie think of the Lincoln School. Had the kids come over there playing basketball and ain't now one of them going to college playing basketball. Ain't now one of them coming professional. Y'all want, all y'all want is people like Rodney Jones that's giving pumpkins and watermelons to the community. Uh, people like Lester Gillespie getting government money, millions of dollars of government money, uh, saying he feeding 300 kids and ain't even feeding 30 kids. That's what y'all want here. You see what I'm saying? But y'all got to remember, God don't like what y'all doing. Y'all some evil ass people. You see what I'm saying? That evilness was in Joplin, Missouri back in May of 2011. And look what God did to that. That tornado tore that damn town up. And then when they got it rebuilt, they showed how racist they was. Uh, some Muslim had built a Muslim mass, and then you had a white person on camera trying to burn it down. Y'all still racist ass. Y'all some evil ass devils. Now here is your Helen Kern Center here in Charles, Missouri. Miss Helen Kern was a civil rights leader, NAACP president, I believe. Uh, She's fought against injustice here in Charles, Missouri. This building is uh, ran by the Charles, Missouri Housing Authority now uh, that uh, can't even secure the, uh, the, the Charles, Missouri Housing Authority uh, properties, which is uh, the housing projects is like 97 percent black. But you ain't going to see city council, city hall, these black uh, individuals that call they self uh, uh, NAACP members. You ain't gonna see none of them talking about this building, trying to up upgrade uh, this building or save this building because of the name, because she black and she put up, stood up against racism. They don't like that. Here's another historical building that you ain't gonna see the city council, the NAACP or none of these black leaders, preachers or none of them speak about trying to keep this here it's ran again by the charles missouri housing authority this is a historical building uh where the one man you were here well they they is not in there but he when he uh, was answering my question about these two buildings that i'm showing y'all the helen kern center and the cf bowen center here uh this is where the lincoln school used to be he spoke and asked uh sergeant percy in the uh, Owens, uh, I used to hoop in Lincoln. You didn't hoop in Lincoln in the 1940s and 50s uh, when my dad and, and, and my aunties and uncles used to go here. This is a historical building, not just for blacks. This is a historical building for Ivies. My auntie El, uh, uh, Thelma Ivy Alford was the Valley Victoria here. My dad was a World War II veteran that went here and fought in a war when he was here in Charles, Missouri. He was segregated to this school when he went to the military and he was uh, drafted in the 40s to fight against Adolf Hitler uh, again. Y'all see who going by? The Charles, Missouri Police Department.
Let's see where he's going. Is he coming to check up on me? But anyway, I just wanted to let y'all just see. They not worried about this building. And then another thing the man said, well, uh, it can't be disturbed. That's why they tore down all this. All that over there used to be the uh, uh, Charleston, uh, I mean, the, the uh, uh, Lincoln School. All that over there, all that property. And it took them, let me show you what it took them, almost three decades after me complaining. Three decades to do something to this basketball court over here uh, where the poles was rusted out so bad they had to cut the basketball courts down. They had to cut the metal down. But now they finally spending a little money uh, and, and uh, they done repaved, they done tore the ground up and repaved it. They said they're going to put a fence up. I ain't got nothing wrong with that because most of the other parks uh, have, or A.D. Simpson have a fence. And uh, to the black folks that come over here tearing it up, you know, once they fix it up, you tear it up, you ain't got no complaint. Y'all complain about me, but I complained about this here. You see, you see Lester Gillespie them, they, they take Bobby Hearns, Lester Gillespie, Rodney John, uh, Jones, them, them is the ones that everything is, is centered around. It ain't centered around nothing to concern the black uh, community. But you see, you see how it's paved off? It was grass growing on there. The poles was rusty. The trash, the white trash cans was rusty. But they got new cans and now they got this here. But see, they not where all this here used to be Lincoln School. But that's historical for black people, not for, for and, and if the shoe fit well, not for the white people and the sell out blacks that's trying to save all these other historical things that Betty Hearns and the rest of them. Betty Hearns didn't give a damn about the black community. You see what I'm saying? Warren Hearns didn't give a damn about the black community. They nephew Robert Hearns don't give a damn about the black community. What he do is he come over here during the holidays uh, throw, uh, taking people, unplugging people's music, saying that we disturbing somebody. Ain't nobody disturbing nobody. You live on the other side of town. You don't live over here. Monica Goodman talking about uh, uh, juveniles over here drinking. What the hell is the white juveniles doing on your side of town? You don't come over here. Hell, you look like you drunk every time. You in one of them damn meetings. Peace be still. Continue to rest in peace, Dad. Johnny A. Ivey Sr., honorably discharged Army World War II veteran, former stu student at the Lincoln School, also known today as the C.F. Bowen Center. Your sister, Aunt Thelma Ivey Alford, the Valen Victoria, your other brothers and sisters, that's part of y'all history. I'm going to keep it going. These sellout blacks, they worse than the whites that kept y'all from going to the Charleston Consolidated School number seven. But I'm going to keep it alive. That's my dad to the, to the left. 18 years old, drafted in World War II. That's his obituary to, in the middle. To the right is me and my three daughters. Back in 2014, when my dad was diagnosed with dementia, he's in the Veteran Hospital, the Jesse Brown Veteran Hospital, named after a brother. Ain't gonna nothing be named after a brother down here in Charles, Missouri, unless it's after Lester Gillespie, Rodney Jones, or some of these sellout blacks. But that's my dad. We was getting him ready to bring him down here. Stayed with us for like about six years until he died. Rest in peace, Dad. Rest in peace, ain't them and all my other uncles and uh, and aunties that went to the Lincoln School, who was segregated until uh, 1961, when a federal uh, court judge in St. Louis, Missouri, ruled that it was discrimination up under the case Davis versus uh, Charles, Missouri, Mississippi County Consolidated School Number Seven. Peace be still. the Charleston Police Department. I'm hoping uh, let's see what's going on. Which way are they going here? Going over the bridge so 
it must be something happening on the I-57 uh, northbound. Uh, they didn't go over the Vidoc, which is boom land. Let me ride my bike down and check it out. My type of work, y'all. Saving lives. 